All right, we're doing violations and fouls. So a uh, violation is different from a foul. A violation is just like you're breaking a rule of the game. So when you call a, a violation, you have to put your hand up straight with your palm out um, and blow your whistle and then do the motion of what was happened. We'll go over those in two seconds. Yeah, and then if um, violations you'll point, it'll be on whatever sideline or baseline. You'll hand the ball to the team and carry on. So this is what you put your hand up, you, or this is for stopping and starting the clock, and then you put your hand up, blow the whistle, do your motion. That's, yeah, jump ball is this, I think we all know that. Okay, so these are some types of violations we have. We just went through these, so we have travel, double dribble, five seconds. Do we have any questions about like what any of these are that we can clarify before we just read them all? <laughs> all right, so on your paper, we have these things. Let's see, we got uh, do, do, do travel, you got to roll your arms like that. Uh, double, illegal dribble, double dribble. Carry, you got to move your arm like this. Backcourt, you go back and forth like that. And it's different from carry. Three seconds in the lane, five seconds, 10. Excessive swinging, kicking. They're pretty self-explanatory. You do what happened. What's up? I got one question. Yeah. Is a, what is an over the back call? Is it just a foul? But uh, what is the motion? Yeah, like an, that would be a yeah a push. Like, like somebody short enough and you're reaching over like an over the back. Yeah. So that, foul? <laughs> I will answer that question for you. So okay. The, that is the most common foul that you hear people in the stands call and people in the court that don't know basketball call. There is no foul in the rule book called an over the back foul. Um, essentially. If I am taller than Matt Twigger, and I am, and I, okay, if I can jump higher than Matt Twigger, which I can, and I'm able to jump up in the air and grab a rebound, even though he is standing like this, if I can grab that rebound without touching him, that is perfectly legal. We're not going to penalize someone for being taller or being or being able to jump higher more athletic than someone. What you will call in a situation like that, so if Matt is standing in front of me and I go through Matt, Matt, can you come here real quick? So the ball is in the air on a rebound. Matt has his hands in the air like, going, like he's going to grab it, and I go like this and get it, it's a push. All right? So you can't go through someone Good or job. push someone out of the way to the ball, but if I'm more athletic, if I'm taller, you wouldn't penalize someone for that, but there's nothing you can do about that. So there's no such thing as over the back in a sense of foul over the back, it's a push if they go through the person, it's a hit if they hit him across the arms, but it's not just because I was able to get up and get the ball over, over that you were in front of without touching you, that's perfectly legal. But even if it's not a push with his body contact, and it's still over the back, but he has the ball, but there is body contact. So then, it would, it would, yeah, you would go with a push again on that. Push? Yeah, if it, if it is clean, people will still call for it, even though it's clean, because they just went up and grabbed it, because they think that just because they're seeing like this, they're entitled to it. They go up clean and pull that ball away from them, nothing, it's perfectly legal. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. I figured I'd jump in, because that is, that is the one rule that you will hear commonly asked for, but it's not a rule. It's not a rule. That's cool. Do you have any other questions about violations and how you signal them and the process of doing that? No? Cool. Uh, is this still me? Is this you? Hey, I have, um, I have one thing. When you call a violation, your palm is always going to be out. When you do a foul, you'll have a closed fist. So a big thing that they're going to try and like, we'll try and help you guys with. So if it's a violation, you know, it's an open palm. Don't come up with a fist because most players will think that you're calling a foul when you're really just like, you're out of bounds, like the ball going the other way. Just focus on that. You'll want to come up with a fist most of the time, just because it's more natural, but it's, it's a palm for any violation. I think good. Good. All right, we're going to talk about travel. Most of y'all define this as just taking more than two steps with a little more depth than that. So. The first part is taking three steps without putting this ball down for a dribble. All right. Then, if you pick your pivot foot up, if you catch the ball, you pick your pivot foot up without starting another dribble. Then that's also a trap. Um, wow. So if you are in an active dribble, okay, and you go up in the air and you come to a jump stop, and you land on both feet, that is perfectly legal. But if you pick up a pivot foot there then it's also travel. And then the same thing, if you're coming down from uh, coming up in the air and then you don't land simultaneously, so say your feet kind of like that, then that's also travel. So we're gonna go through some video. We're 
gonna ask you all what you got. What did you guys see? I see three. Yeah. So you can see the travel right there because he took like three or four steps before he actually stopped. And then he passes the ball. So he picks up the ball right here, and then you can count the steps from when he picks it up. There's one, two, three. <laughs> Any questions? There we go. Looks like he moved his pick. That's the most common travel you will see. He catches the ball and then he takes a step. If he's, before he catches it, takes a step and then receives the ball in the act of it, he's fine. But if you see right, when this video starts over again, if you see right there, he catches the ball and then he shuffles his feet. So once you catch the ball, you have established a pivot foot. You can move one foot, you can't move both. And this one is quick. You're probably going to miss it the first time you see it out there. And so probably the second and third, too. It just. takes a little bit, but just remember that play and then come back to it when you see it again. Make sure you grab it. <laughs> Charlie, what you got? Uh, 54, when you cut the ball, to left to right and then he went to left again. Left to right. Left to right. Left to right. Is that a missed ball? Yeah. Yeah. So we missed this one, and it's slight, but he lands on his feet, and then he reestablishes and picks up both feet, puts him out again. In fact, when he passes the ball right here, she does the same thing. So we missed two on just watch the foot. Whichever lands first when they catch it, they can move the other foot. As soon as they catch it and they move that foot and then move the other foot, it's like taking a step, moving it, and they can do that all the way down if you don't call it. So just watch it for that. Whenever someone gets the ball, just pick up either their left foot or their right foot as their pivot foot. And then if they move that before starting their dribble, then it's trapped. And you'll see it a lot when people start driving too, where they'll shuffle and then they will go. It's, a, it's cheating because you pick up steam before the defender has time to move. So. You're supposed to ask that question first. Oh, that's fine. That's fine now. No, they didn't see it. Sure. Okay, so does anyone know the criteria that meets a five second closely guarded? Like, Yeah. And. Okay, so both feet on the ground hand out within arm's length. So that's pretty much it. You can go to the next one. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so it's basically, you have to face the ball handler. If you're turned around and you're dribbling the ball back there, I'm not guarding you. So it's not a five second. But if you're dribbling the ball and I'm within six feet, and my hand's out, and you're not moving, you're just dribbling the ball, then it's you start the five second count we do this to prevent teams from holding the ball for 15 minutes just sitting there and the game's going to end two to zero so you just it prevents that does anyone know how you can end it though i'll let you get that one um okay one thing so if you need a guide okay. to what six feet is the distance from the free throw line to the top of the arc for the three-point arc that's exactly six feet so if you need to kind of measure up okay are they within six feet that's what you can look at on the court yeah, they don't necessarily have to be right up on them. There's like, this is still probably six feet right here. Like, that's fine. Six feet. For most of you, six feet is the length of your arm as well. So this is, for most people, six feet is your arms outstretched. I don't know what that looks like. Thank you. All right, does anyone, anyone tell me how, once we start a count for a close to guard, how the ball handler can make it end? Picks up his dribble. He can pick up his dribble. Go down six foot of distance. So either the defender backs away or he gets far enough away so he's outside six feet. He can pass the ball, get rid of the ball, yeah. Shoot. Uh, start a dribble. Yeah. Shoot. Shoot the ball. <laughs> Not an obvious one. Okay. 
And there's one more. So he can also get his head and shoulders past the defender. Okay, so if he gets around his defender, then he's no longer closely guarded. Any questions? All right. So not all of them are going to be this obvious because he's really not moving at all. So like most of the time people are just going to be dribbling backwards and then try to dribble a little bit forward and they'll dribble sideways. But they don't realize that they dribble from one sideline to the other sideline, that defender's still within six feet, the clock never stopped. So like people just think, oh, you got to cover f six feet distance and then you're good. The clock doesn't restart as long as that defender doesn't back off or that offender doesn't get past you. So, I got this one. You got okay, so for back court, you you have to have front court access first, or establish front court first. So to establish front court, you have to have both feet and the ball past half court. So if you have one foot and dribbling the ball past half court and your other foot's still on the other side, you can't get a backcourt violation because you never established front court uh, status. But that means you're still doing the 10 second call if you never established that front court status yet. So as soon as he passes or obtains front court status, as soon as any part of his body touches that mid court line, you call a backcourt violation because then he's crossing back over the backcourt line. So yeah, so the important thing is two feet in the ball. So if the edge of this table is the midcourt line, all right, and I'm here dribbling with the ball, am I front court or back court here? It's still back court, right? I have two feet over, but the ball's back. What do I have? We're still back court, right? Okay, so even if I'm dribbling the ball back here, as long as I never brought it over the line, we're still in the back court. Okay. Is the line considered front court or back court? The what? That division line is that the if I'm standing on that is that front court or back court? You're still in the back court because you have to cross that line. So you have to fully cross that line and not touch it. And then as soon as you get that status, it's then when you touch that line again, <coughs> that's when that back court violation comes into play. And it's just a simple turnover and the other team inbounds it from whichever sideline is closer to when he did it. This crew right here. What number are we on? One. What y'all got? Back my court. It's footsteps over right there. So what happens? Yeah, like as we go through, what happens? He's dribbling the ball. He's good. And his feet and the ball come over and his foot goes back. So if he just brings his feet over that line, is he still okay? Or yeah. So if he if he brought his feet over the line, he keeps that dribble on the back court. He's good. Now if you were to bring his feet over the line and then picks up the ball, then he's established himself in the front court. But I'm saying like he's already in the front court. If he just brings his feet into the back court, but the ball is not in the back court, is that a violation? Has he already established? Like he's already been in the front court. Yeah. So yeah. So if he then goes back into that back court violation. Yeah. All he has to do is touch that line when he already established front court. What was Mark call? This is a back court violation. Well, what about the lead chain right there? Didn't two push him behind the line? Like watch. So there's a difference in the call. Push where, look at his angle. You have to look where the rep is yeah. looking. You know, yeah. like, can't see behind him. So. Yeah. so in here, it looks more like white. Make, so he sees the defender come and make a move for the ball, and he moves to evade him and goes into the back court in the process. There's our lovely Matthew Twitter right there underneath the basket. Is that me? Yeah, you're right. Look at that white shoes. Right? Dark shoes. White shoes count up. Does it have a laser pointer on it? It does. Oh, look. Right there. <coughs> That's been freshman year, you. I think, Ruben, is that your brother? What? Is that your man? That looks like Matt. How do I get to play again? Danny, how do I get to play again? Go head back. And then forward and forward again. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely your brother. He's got the short hair like him. 
think it's yeah, I think it's your brother. No, it's just not loading in. Alright, go ahead and Okay, essentially in this video, the dude passes it to this girl and her foot is all the way across that line. That's really what it's gonna show. Okay, so a uh, kickball doesn't just have to be with your foot. So it's anywhere from the waist down, and so if you make a movement towards the ball, and then and then you make contact with it, then it's a kickball. Okay, it has to be intentional. So if I'm just standing here, and Preston just throws the ball on my legs, and I just stand here, I don't move towards it, that's not a kickball. <laughs> Does anyone, uh, Alyssa just went over. Does anyone remember the signal for? Yeah, yeah, so you're going to put your hand for a violation and just show that you're hitting your foot. So yeah, here it winds up being out of bounds off of white, anyways. Um, a lot of big balls will be like that, but just make sure to show that you got the violation and get that motion, anyways. We got another video here. All right, so my group in the back five. What do y'all have? Blue ball. Yeah. So this, one, this one's my favorite because 44 here, like he looks like he knows exactly what happened. He's like, all right. So they didn't call this? No. Because if you saw at the last second, he put his foot out and kicked it. If he kept his foot in and just threw it off his foot, it would have been fine. But he stuck his foot out intentionally, kicked it. So that's why it was a kickball. Okay, so carrying, it happens a lot. It rarely gets called. Uh, it's when the ball fully comes to rest on your palm. So if you're sideways, it doesn't matter. If the ball fully stops and you're just carrying it, and then you come over, then it's a carry or palming, whichever one you like to use. A trick for this one that I like to use is, so if you look at the ball, if their hand comes underneath the halfway point of the ball, it's most likely a carry. And make sure to look that it kind of has that pause there. But the way you'll tell between this and the normal dribble is that it'll come to rest and then they'll have to come back over it to start their dribble. Group one. Group one. Oh, group one. Yeah. Group two. Oh. That's right. Okay, group two. What do you want? Oh, that is group two. My bad. Not pressed. That's what I meant to say. It's like this. Mm -hmm. I think how fall like this and then went. Mm-hmm. Went around. Went around. Yep. Do you know the signal for it? So if you have if you have your partner or you call a carry on someone, they're probably going to do it again. Like your habits, they don't change that quickly, right? Yeah. So that's something to look out for. Just because you caught it the first time doesn't mean you have to catch it every time. Even high school officials like this, they miss calls like this. So I mean, you're not expected to call every single carry, every single travel. You will miss things over and over again. It's fine. <laughs> Only if you're Matthew Twitter. You know it. Okay. Uh, went over a lane violation um, in our little quiz. But essentially, it's when someone, while we're taking a free throw, enters before they're supposed to. And we have two types. You can have an immediate one or a delayed one. Now, the two general categories is if it's immediate, it's going to be on the offense. We don't want them to count in the basket, so we want to get that whistle in there immediately. The delay is it's on the defense because if the ball has a chance to still go in, there's no need to stop the game, stop the flow of the game. We can just have it delayed, and then if it doesn't go in, 
then we can go ahead and call back and get them in the truck. So the way this breaks down is the six players that are lined up on the lane in front of the shooter, they cannot enter until the ball has been released from the shooter's hand. The shooter cannot enter until the ball has hit the rim, and anyone who lined up outside of the three-point arc can't enter inside the three-point arc until the ball has hit the rim. And the same thing also applies to the defense. Everyone was confused for a second. And this is one that we actually miss a lot because everyone's busy looking at the six players rebounding. No one actually checks the shooter. And you'll learn tomorrow whose responsibility the shooter is. But there's a difference here between them running and trying for a rebound and their foot just crossing the line a little bit. Um, so if their foot crosses the line a little bit, you can tell them to just look out for that. And if they run in like this, call that back. Make sure it doesn't count. Okay, that's dangerous. Anyway, there's two types, okay. There's, no, you can go ahead, that's fine. There's two types of uh, calls that can prevent a basket from going, is goaltending and basket interference. Does anyone know the difference between basket interference and goaltending? So basket interference <laughs> is when you do a layup or you're shooting the ball off the backboard and there's a defensive player that goes up and smacks the backboard while or before the shot has gone in. All right? Okay. All right. And goaltending is when like they're doing the layup or they're doing a shot and it's on its way down and then you just smack it out of the way. Yeah, essentially. Your, your second part was right. So yeah. you can make contact with the backboard out here in our game if you're legitimately trying to block a shot. Okay, that's fine. Basket interference more pertains to the net and the cylinder. So if a ball is within the net or on the cylinder or above the cylinder, if someone comes up and either slaps the backboard or interferes with the net or the rim, then that's basket interference. And you should count the basket if it's the defense that does it, and you should wave it off if it's the offense that does it. Your goal sending is first. Neither one of them will be. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, essentially, both calls are going to end with either the offense getting the, the bucket to count or it coming back out. So if it's come, the ball coming down and they t the, someone makes contact with it when it's coming down or around the cylinder, then call it whoever team it was on. And even if you use either one of these, both teams are going to know exactly what that means. So the important thing with goaltending uh, is right here. It has to have a chance to do it. So if you get your shot blocked or you airball it with like six feet, all right, you can you can go up and catch that ball. That's not goaltending. All right, it has to have a chance to go in. So if it looks like if it's going to hit the rim or come close to hitting the rim and they swat out, they're on the way down, and that's goaltending. or above the cylinder when he touches the net, right? And it looks like he poked it out of there. I mean, it, look, it almost looks like his hand is going through the net. Yeah. So if his hand ever comes through the net and he makes contact with the ball, know that it'll automatically call it because his hand cannot make contact to it if his hand is in the middle of the basket because it's a goaltending or basket interference every single time. <laughs> what y'all got? 
Yeah, so it's his own teammate, but he's still not allowed to interfere with the ball when he's doing the basket. Same as here. So it doesn't count. And the other team inbounds it from underneath the basket. So Andy right here makes this call. Um, and his story with this is that his the coach of this player was like, what happened? He was like, your own player knocked out. He's like, man, he's naked. Right. <laughs> this is a dumb play by Gold because that ball's going in. But it happened. So if they interfere with it somehow, you got to wave off that basket make sure it doesn't count. And it's essentially like a turnover. The other team gets it, and they go the other way. Yep. Same thing with goaltending. If the defense goaltends or basket interference, the bucket counts, but the defense still gets the ball because it's like they made a layup. like the defender makes contact with the backboard, but it's a legitimate attempt at blocking. I don't think he makes contact with the ball here, but for whatever reason, this official thought that he interfered with the basket and comes to the council. If he hit that side of the basket, then it would be basket interference because he hit the other side of the basket, and he uh, probably did it on purpose. In that circumstance, he's not trying to block that shot. He's just trying to hit the backboard to make it fall. Okay. So if it's on the same side of the rim, it's probably legit. If it's on the other side of the rim, definitely not. Score that basket. So, some other violations. Double dribbles, basically when you dribble the ball with two hands, or you dribble it, you pick it up, and you dribble it again. Either way, it's a double dribble. Um, 10 seconds in the backcourt. Uh, it's when an uh, offensive team inbounds it in the backcourt and they're trying to get it past half court. They have 10 seconds. The 10 second stops whenever, whenever you establish front court status. So that ball's across half court, but your feet aren't. You're still in the backcourt because technically you can't get a backcourt violation, so you could just sit there the whole game if you really wanted to. So they have to establish front court status and then the 10 seconds stops. If you hit 10 seconds, you call it and it's just a turnover. The other team gets the ball. Five seconds out of bounds, when you inbound the ball, let's say Leganx has the ball and I'm inbounding the ball, whether I bounce it or hand it to him, depending on the spot we're at, he has five seconds to throw it in. If he doesn't throw it in with that five seconds, even if I count to five and I'm about to blow my whistle and he's about, he just released the ball as soon as I'm about to blow my whistle, I can still blow it because it was about five and a half, six seconds that he took. So just use your discretion. We usually say, if you count to five and you have your whistle up already in your mouth, just blow it. Even if he just releases the ball right as soon as you were gonna do it, just blow it. And hmm? turnover, does the other get the ball with this? Oh, yeah. lost possession. Right. So for the inbounding play, if it's a five second violation, the other team's going to get it exactly where the stop was. For 10 seconds, it's going to be wherever the team advance the ball to. So if they get it right to half court, then you're going to give it to the other team right at half court. If they were really bad and somehow only got it to the free throw line, you're going to give it to the free throw line. Okay. Um, for these last two, if you need help determining whether or not your counting is off or on, if you're actually counting it for one second every time, you have a running clock for the first 38 minutes of your game, just look up at it while you're counting and you can see if you're going too fast or too slow or right time. Try to get you. <laughs> so towards the end of the video here, you can see he starts his dribble, momentarily brings it up, and catches it. 
actually do hand and start to the end. It's really slight, and the first time you see this, you probably won't catch it. But after watching it a couple times, you'll be happy. He uses that two hands. Mm -hmm. Yep. And players usually call them on the cells because they like look around or they pick it up weirdly or they have a face on them because he's going down and then he just, as soon as the ball's going down, he just switches hands and hits the ball before it comes down again. So both hands hit it before it hit the ground. It might not always be obvious where they dribble two hands or they pick it up for like a minute and then they start dribbling again. Sometimes it's super slight. Hey, Andrew, you just looks so funny. <laughs> So this is what I was talking about before, like he hit five and he blew his whistle. Even though he threw it in before he got to like maybe that six second mark, he still blew it because that the offender still took like five and a half seconds just to throw the ball in. So it's like, it's up to your discretion. If you think he got, like if you're counting maybe a little bit too fast and you think he got off just in time, it's just, it's up to your discretion. So other violation you got, we can have a spot violation. So if the ball goes out of bounds, or we have a violation, and the other team gets it, and we tell them, you can throw in from this spot. They get a step to each side from where you told them. If for whatever reason we're on the end line, and they think they have the baseline to run like they would on a made basket, and they just take off, then that's a spot violation. There's no signal for it, but you just call a violation, and then you're gonna give it to the other team at the spot where they should have thrown it from. Three seconds in the lane. So, my group was a little confused. In the NBA, they call it they call it defensive three seconds. We don't do that out here. We only have offensive three seconds. So if an offensive player is in the lane for three seconds, they have to they have to establish themselves outside the lane, and then they can come back in. So if they're there for more than three seconds, you call a three second violation on them. Uh, held or jump ball. So if one team if one teammate is holding the ball and then someone comes in and two players have simultaneous possession of the ball, then that's a jump ball. You're gonna determine from the jump ball, we'll talk about this tomorrow night, which way the alternating possession arrow is, and then you'll uh, call a jump ball, and then one team will get it. And then excessive swinging of the elbows. We don't see this a whole lot, but the way you can tell this is if someone has the ball, and like they're surrounded by people who are trying to get the ball from them, they'll start swinging their torso, and if their elbows are moving, faster than their torso, and that's excessive swing. Um, you can only call this violation if they don't make contact with something. So they'll look like they'll look like a helicopter out there. Um, and you're gonna and if they don't make contact then you can call violation. And this is kind of a way to make sure that people don't do sort of this violent act of swing their elbows. Alright, before we go to foul, stand up real quick. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and